Hi everybody, welcome to Saturday Live at the Backyard Bird Center. Today, uh, I'm gonna be talking about winter finches. Uh, we have finches here all year long, but we have a lot more finches in winter than we do in the summer months. And they are a mainstay. The whole finch group is a mainstay at bird feeder stations like I said, especially during the winter months, and they they can be confusing. So I've got them broken down into groups, and I am going to go through there, and hopefully uh, you'll have a little better understanding of, of separating out these uh, what can be confusing little seed-eating birds uh, that we get at our bird feeders. So easily the most common of the finch group that we get are the goldfinches. Now, some people will look at that and go, wait a minute, that's not a goldfinch. He's not bright canary yellow. Uh, well, of course, I've done entire programs on um, the goldfinch bird itself. But this is a breeding male goldfinch, American goldfinch, that does not, you won't see these this time of year because they molt twice a year and completely molt twice a year, and that's very rare. Um, but if you were this color this time of year in winter, you would be an easy target for predators. So instead, these guys molt completely in the fall, and we don't get to see it a lot because they're doing that. When they're, when they're molting in the fall, they're out there um, it, it usually feeding in the wild on, on nature's bounty in September and October. Uh, and, and when they come back into their feeders in December, they look more like this. They're more of the olive drab. And now coming up in the next month or so, we'll start to see bright yellow feathers starting to, to poke through everywhere as they mold into their, their breeding plumage. And that's going to start happen. But the group of I, I broke these finches down into three groups, and I call these the small finches, uh, the first group, the American goldfinch. Uh, and, and all three of the birds in this group I'm going to cover, I want you to note that they have basically the same shape bill. Their body shape and posture is all very much the same, now, and, but they differ in striping um, and, and some other things I'm going to point out. But Physically, they all look very similar. That's why they're lumped together. They're cousins to one another. So the next one is the pine siskin. And uh, the pine siskin looks just like an American goldfinch with this body size and shape and its bill, that same very thin bill, but it's just striped all over. You know, this is a great shot because it's showing the wing, the yellow in the wings and in the tail feathers when they fly. Got another good picture that illustrates that when they're flared out when they're feeding, but they don't have the all over yellow. They don't have the yellow in the throat they, and they're covered in stripes. They're just stripes everywhere. And these are like all these three, and they're covering here, they're almost always feeding together. When we have a lot of siskins, like last winter, we had quite a few siskins around here, uh, and they are in flocks with a lot of goldfinches mixed together feeding. And, and all these finches, the, the small finch group, love niger. They love fine sunflower chips. They love black oil sunflower, so they're easy to attract to bird feeder stations. Another great shot. And you can see it on the wire mesh, that little thin bill of theirs is great for pulling out seed out of those very tiny openings. That's why finch feeders have such small openings. Good posture there. Now, the other cousin of there, whoop, going to blow that up just a little bit. And this is Roos, uh, in the Roos yard, a common red pole. Now, this is a bird that is not at all common here, actually quite rare and prized when you see them. But when I post things about them, a lot of times people, they immediately think, oh, I've got those because they're thinking of house finches that are red, and we're going to cover those here in just for a few minutes. But again, the same body shape, the same posture, and the same small tiny bill as that pine siskin and that American goldfinch. But look closer, look at the color of this bill. It is yellow, not black like or gray like the other two, and it's got black around the face. The amount of red in the pole, the red on the top of their head, can vary to just a very little bit to, to a good amount on the top. So you can't use, unfortunately, you can't use the, their name, red pole. Sorry, I'll get back to my slides better here. The, uh, this was a, another red pole taken a few years ago. Yellow bill, black around the face, and the red on top of the and on top of the head. 
This is one just taken a, a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, near the store here. Now the stripes, like most people would confuse that with a pine siskin. Yellow bill, black around the face, red on the top. I keep saying that, yellow bill and black face because that is so unique about this bird. So whenever it comes to separating them out, here are the three in the small finch group. The winter plumage American goldfinch, the pine siskin, and the common red pole. These are the three winter finches that are most easily confused. They're all the same size and shape and everything. So uh, now the other, uh, getting into it, oh, threw in this very, very rare bird here in the roof shard. This is a lesser goldfinch here. And if you're watching this and you live down in Texas and or Arizona or somewhere like that, you're going, no, they're not. They're all over the place. Yes, there are a southwestern species, but in our area, they are very rare. And this was in Roost Backyard several winters ago. Um, I think it was the first photo documentation of a, a lesser goldfinch in the state of Missouri. So, no, green-backed. Oh, the green, this variety of them. There are two varieties of them. There's the blackbacks and there's greenbacks. And this is the first photographic evidence of a greenback variety. So, a uh, really unique bird. If you want to study more about those, you can look those up, but extremely rare here in this part of, uh, of the world. So just threw that in there. Now, the next group of finches, the two, two primary ones, the, the two that we have here, um, I call these the red finches. And I know you have these in your yard. Almost everybody watching this, if you're in Missouri, you have house finches. This is a house finch in his yard. This has been described, it looks like a cross between a cardinal and a sparrow. And that's, you know, that's pretty descriptive. We're very, the red and the face and the chest, uh, and then also down the back, and then brown wings and brown stripes down its sides. But look, again, look at the physical features. Look how much larger that bill is than those that goldfinch or that pine siskin or that common red pole, which is that small, thin bill. This is a much thicker bill. And it, and it actually has a curve to the bill that going whenever it, right where it meets, reaches the body, meets the body. And these guys, while they love sunflower, but they, they also love, and they'll eat niger and chips, but they love safflower. Their bill is, is strong enough to crack open that hard safflower seed, where the goldfinches and those small finches, they can't do that. Safflower is out of their realm of, of feeding. So the, the house finches are, will a lot of times be on that safflower seed. Now, if you have this bird, doing these birds in the summer months of, uh, here in Kansas City, it's definitely a house finch. But the bird that it, 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 it gets confusing, of course, oh, this is an orange variant. Just to show you that color is a, a tricky thing to use in identification, this is called an air orange variant house finch. Instead of being the nice red, it is a more of an orange color, and we do see those around here um, and, and, and occasion, and it confuses people. But the stripes are the same. Uh, you know, the bill is the same physically, but color can be tricky to identify birds with. That's why I threw that, that slide in there. And another thing that can be tricky about house finches and separating house finches from purple finches, which is coming next, is the amount of red in a male house finch. Loads of red, not very much red, didn't go down the chest nearly, but this one's a red almost all the way down to the, past the belly, into the vent. You know, the house finches can have a lot, a lot of red in them. And that confuses people because that's what they think. They think they're purple finches. But look, every one of these house finches has brown stripes down its flanks. Brown stripes down its flanks. Brown stripes. These are these are three fe the females. This is a house sparrow here in the middle. But the, the amount of streaking on the breast. Now, when we get to the purple finches, which invade here in, in certain winters. Some winters we have a lot, some winters we don't have very many. Um, and then, But if you live up just north of here, you have a lot more purple finches than we usually see down here in the Kansas City area and south. But purple finch over here, we're, no brown striping on its sides. Brown striping on the sides of the house finches. And the color is different. I always say that a purple finch looks like someone has taken it and dipped it in raspberry Kool-Aid because it's an all over wash. It's all, see all the, if you can see this raspberry color in the, the, the wing feathers, whereas on a house finch, where it's brown, it's brown, and where it's red, it's red. So 
these two are pretty easy to separate once you get used to the idea. The confusion, like I said, comes in when you see a, a male house finch who's got tons of red in him. And that's understandable, but watch where the separation is and watch for those brown stripes down the side where that purple finch is going to be washed all over. Now, another good thing about uh, identifying purple finches is the females. Females are will quite often alert you that there are purple finches at your feeder because the purple finch female has the white stripe through the eye and the white malar stripe here, whereas the female house finch is all striped, you know, gray, brownish striping all over. And the, the house finches and, and the certain purple finches will jump out at you. A lot of times the purple finches are darker. The females are more chocolate rich, darker brown than the striping and a house finch. So they are both there. Huskier birds. I love this picture uh, taken by a friend of mine here in Kansas City. Uh, this had, this is a purple finch, new brown striping on the sides. This is an orange variant house finch, and this is another, just a regular male house finch. All three of them captured in one shot there. It was a really excellent photo by my friend Elise Owens, who took that picture years ago, and I've used it countless times in doing programs because of that, that comparison. Now, the last group of finches don't even have finches in their name, and that uh, confuses people, but they are finches, and those are the crossbills. Now, finch, a lot of finches are very specialized in the seeds that they eat, and a lot of that determination of whether we get them in winter has a lot to do with their food supply that they're going into the winter. If their particular food supply they usually are count on uh, up in, in the northern reaches where they nest, fails, then they move further south in the winter. Now, there's no better example of a, a specialized finch than, there are, than the crossbills. And if you, hopefully you can see the, the, the pictures that all of these finches, they have their bills crossed like that. Their bills are specialized for popping out certain pine cone seeds, cone seeds. And when those cone seeds fail, or they are, have a really short supply of them in the north where they're at, then they move south in the winter. And a lot of times, if you're lucky, they'll, they'll make set, settle in on your bird feeders. This on the left is a white-winged crossbill. You see the two white stripes and this, this pale pinkish-red color. And then this on the right is, uh, are the red crossbills, a male on the bottom and a female on the top. Uh, the, the yellow and the, and the red, and they're uh, beautiful examples of uh, on pine cones where they, or, or spruce cones where they pop them out. And a lot of times these birds are very specific on the kind of cones they want to feed on, um, and they settle into certain areas around here. But uh, we have had them settle in on people's bird feeders for the entire winter. And again, a female on the bottom and a male on the top feeding on a finch feeder with black tie in it, the, the, the Niger and the sunflower chips. And then this is a white wing crossbill feeding among goldfinches and one pine siskin down here, eating niger out of a seed tube. And a lot of times when you watch them feed, they, they can't get that big crossbill. So they get right up against that hole and they'll dart their tongue in there and, and, and pull out a seed with their tongue and niger seed and, and open it up and eat it. It's entertaining to watch. So finches are a fascinating group. And they, I know they can be confusing, and it's worth studying. Now, I've done entire videos on separating house finches and purple finches, and I hope I put a link up here for you uh, to get that out. But you can study finches more in more detail. Gold finches, I've got whole videos on those on the YouTube channel as well. So it's a great idea for a program, great group of birds. Thanks for sending that in. Give, if you would, give the video a like, give it a share, and if you're on YouTube, please subscribe. Until then, we'll come back. We'll talk birds.